Touch the ground, folks. <laughs> you can wave them, but keep them high. He got the Distinguished Service Cross, Bronze Star. He was wounded, got the Purple Heart. He got the DSC. Yeah, the Distinguished Service Cross. No, he got it in. Uh, no, he got it in France. But he was also given a white commission. He was. He started out as an enlisted in the Vermont National Guard. Wow. Okay. And uh, what happened was he got the Distinguished Service Cross and. Uh, France and then when the war ended he went back in when, yeah. term, when Korea started right. and he got captured and died in POW camp. Right. Right. Go ahead. You know the history now. I know now. Okay. Yeah. But I didn't know the DSC was in, in yeah. France because yeah. he got, he, maybe he got a second one in Korea. He wounded, he got wounded in France because he crawled out and saved two guys. Yeah. That's where the Distinguished Service Cross came from. Okay. We also got one in Korea. So, anyway, so we have come here to talk about Captain Frederick Drow, and he was he happened to be my uncle. His uncle. He uh, came from Brattleboro. We, I'm sure Brattleboro has other heroes, but many. But uh, but this is this guy is the only one I know that served in Korea. Well. No, I know another one, but that's all right. It was a class me one. But anyway, he went in the army during World War II, got out, went back in during Korea. He was given a direct commission as an officer in Germany during his service there. He went back in as an officer. He was the, uh, okay, let me, I wrote it down this morning so I wouldn't forget the dates. But uh, in the fall of 1950, the U.S. Army decided it was going to capture North Korea. And so they, they were going north. And on the 1st of November, 1950, the 8th Cavalry Regiment was ordered north to support the 7th Rock Division, Republic of Korea Army, who was being engaged by a, a, a element that was pretty strong. And we found out that it was the uh, Chinese communist forces who had come into Korea in great strength. And on the 1st of November, the 8th Cavalry Regiment of the 1st Cavalry Division in the area of Yunsan, Korea, which runs on the west bank of the Kuryang River toward the uh, Yalo River in North Korea. And they were basically overwhelmed. 
Captain Drow at the time was the executive officer of L Company of the 3rd Battalion of the 8th Cavalry Regiment. Um, about 3 o'clock in the morning of the 2nd of November, what was left of the regiment was combined in a small perimeter. And uh, Captain Drow, who was seriously wounded at the time, apparently basically took command of the regiment. And uh, somewhere in that area, the units that was left surrendered and were taken to North Korea. So he died of wounds on April 16th, 1951. Um, I don't know when his remains were repatriated. I, uh, uh, some time after 1951. Yes. Yeah, I uh, have some clippings uh, okay. where his body was. I, uh, I happened to be involved in the in the repatriation of, of some of the people that were that were brought back over. But uh, anyway, I, I just think everybody should know about him because he was uh, one of our local heroes. I also have an uncle who's buried up at St. Michael's. His name was Joseph LeClaire. He's on the memorial up at the Commons. He was uh, involved in the Battle of uh, Iwo Jima, Leyte Gulf, and died in uh, Okinawa. He was killed in Okinawa. And his remains were buried initially in the 5th Marine Cemetery in Okinawa, but he was, remains were repatriated and he's buried up here now. So I feel kind of a, a, an obligation and a debt, not only being a veteran myself, but to these two gentlemen who gave me the ability to be here and live free like I do. And thank you all for helping yes, get out the flag. Yes, thank you very this much. This is huge. It took us like Many two hands weeks make to light work, it, believe me. when we were doing it by ourselves. So this is great. Thank you well, very thank much. Thank you for I letting us. Thank, thank you for including us. Including us. It's a great. I hope you continue to do it. Afternoon. Thank you. And some of those places that I've told you about, I noticed with passing it on, the ones that are hidden down behind That's things great. and everything, Same. I'll keep passing it on. Because I know a couple of them I found Mike. that they never did have a flag or a marker until we suddenly said, oh, yeah, let's go down and check out that one down there. And yeah, find out it was there. Thank you very much for all. Yeah, being the service officer Legion, I put in many of these uh, military markers for people who don't have one. And uh, I think the last one I did was the person died in like 1996. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a marker. And I'm surprised at a lot of them because I have one of the same Michaels. He was involved in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. And he got out as a Lieutenant Colonel, I think it was. Yeah. So there's a lot of them. There's a lady over there that I just did. Uh, you just put a flag on it. Mrs. Johnson was, Miss Johnson, her name was actually Nelson after she got married, but she was a bosun's mate. And if you know what a bosun's mate is in the Navy or the Coast Guard, they're called deck hands or deck apes. She was a second class bosun's mate in the Coast Guard during World War II. And I just put her stone in. Okay. I guess we thank you very much. Thank you again. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all. Actually, we need another one. Claire,